Is that what destiny feels like? Morning. We're just having fun. If you take stuff too serious, this channel may not be for you, buddy. Hello. Good morning. Welcome. Today we're going to have a very calm, refreshing, non again laid back episode of the Puddin's Fabrication Shop. On last week's video, we uh, started some custom suspension on the front of our Datsun. That's right, baby. That upper plate looks as surprised as I do that this thing ever held together. Oh, man. Everything on this thing's plumb worn out. So there's that all cleaned up. Come on, come on. There she goes. Rust check. She's good. Sometimes having a crane's handy. We got our moss and dirt covered uh, lower. <laughs> well, I don't know what in the kiss and cousin fabrication we got going on here. Yeehaw! With this video, there were several questions out there in the YouTube lands. Number one question, Puddin, how come you did not just weld that whole front clip on there? The overcomplicated answer is because I didn't want to. The more simple answer is, the track width is too wide. You open up an additional can of worms. It's not less work, guys. But everything's there already. Is it? You see, with the front being too wide, you still have to narrow the suspension. At least on hard bodies, still need the upper control arms corrected for the angle of the ball joints. And then you gotta figure out steering and hooking it up so you're cutting your factory column. You're obviously cutting your frame in half, so there's all that fab work. And last but not least, you got to do your front mounts and everything else, so it's not less work. There goes Mr. Bill on his bicycle. All right, guys. No, seriously, it's it's the same amount of work uh, because I wanted to make it work on that frame. That's my answer. Why? That's okay with you guys. <laughs> I cannot imagine doing a video just not having fun anymore. Okay, so I tried. It was a valiant effort, but we're done with that. I can't believe last week when we are working on this front suspension that no one commented and, uh, uh, what, what was that song called? It was by, like, Daryl Datsun and the Dinglers. Hey, damn, here's my old Datsun. She needs to get on the road again. Only if we get to work again. She needs some new suspension. Come on, baby. No? No one else remembers that song, alright? So between y'all's positive reaction to last week's video and that old classic banger of a song, uh, I was inspired this week to just get out here again and keep going. I can tell you what don't inspire me. A couple of people asked why I didn't slap the bed on it last week for a little mock-up. I do not like the bob bed, guys. I did when I was 18, I don't now. I know it does inspire me. Center of our notch, roughly 46 and a half. Boy, how's that for a selfie stick? Can't let y'all see that way because there's a vehicle you ain't seen yet. 
44 and a half. I eyeballed 46 and a half center of the notch. That means there's a give or take. Oh, is that what destiny looks like? <laughs> Smells like destiny to me. Is that what destiny feels like? She's pretty flat. <laughs> That's happening. We are nowhere close to needing to put a box on this thing. She needs rear suspension. But you can thank the front suspension for making this happen. Yeah. I was gonna slap the bob bed on this thing, send her down the road. After we had to put this much work into our front suspension, I've been wanting to find a Datsun long bed to throw that box on anyhow and put air right on it. Uh, hello, we're halfway there. Uh, now we've got nice front stuff going on. Well, she's the one, y'all. She is the one. Bye-bye, Bob Bed. I know some of y'all like the Bob Bed. I do not, so this makes me happy. And if I'm happy, y'all's happy. Don't worry, it's just our custom rear suspension. Our custom two link broke off. I cut them tabs and sat her down for the last thumbnail picture. Don't worry about that. I ain't decided how I'm gonna brand her yet, but if it says Datsun King Delivery on the side or something, don't be mad at me. I'm open to suggestions of what you'd like to see on the side of the box of the old Datsun King Delivery rig. Maybe I can Comment some of the better ones at the top and y'all can reply on it which one y'all like. Involve a little uh, subscriber interaction. So we end up with uh, subscriber satisfaction. Uh, yeah, I don't know what we're gonna do first. I know what we're gonna do first actually. We're gonna get that damn transmission out of there cause she's just making a mess for us to lay in. But we're about to have a vent for the big toe to keep that baby cool on these new balances. There we go. Forgot cameraman Bill was here. Probably should have pulled the shifter off first. <laughs> yeah, we should have definitely uh, pulled the shifter first. I forgot someone put a damn seven footer in here. She'll go. Oh, there we go. Oh. Come on, baby. <laughs> there we go. Don't worry, folks. The custom fab don't stop here. We custom fab this baby all up, all over. I'm gonna get started with our lower mount here. You may remember I had to lob out some of our uh, support right there. Got this side jacked up. I mean, it looks like that's what's still kind of holding us up some there, so she could probably collapse a little more, actually. So right in here is where we're gonna start. We're doing something with this mount. Ball joint nuts are not castle nuts. That's kind of interesting. Oh, she's heavy. Get that spindle out the way. Karate chop. Holy cow. We're going to try this Loctite freeze and release. Somebody sent this to me. I've never used it. How about now? There she went. Holy cow. No, don't mind that custom wobble nut on there now. Give her a little trim here. Back here we drop straight down. Right here's old pivot point. Now we're gonna angle this way. And we're going whoop, right there. The old plasma slice deluxe ready here. By the time I get done hacking her up, we ain't gonna have nothing left, are we? She's currently like me right now. She ain't pretty, but she's a work in progress. <laughs> Think she could use a little flapper disc in her life. Take it back now, y'all. About to plate this baby up. 
in my old sheep shears. All right, she ain't the best. She's a little wobbly, crunchy. She's a little broken. I think we can make her work. Looks like them scrapers old Mortsky's always trying to sell, don't it? Mortsky, don't want your damn scraper, bud. Give it up. <laughs> I may have messed up this corner here, so we're just gonna, gonna freehand her. Don't worry about that. Do y'all hear them yapping dogs? Hear them sirens? Good gracious, one day I will get out this city, y'all. Y'all tell old Mortsky to do some more project style stuff. Uh, he's got really cool projects and all he does is wheel it runs. Uh, say, Mortsky, we want to see that old flathead, damn it. <laughs> Boom! Take them old channel locks and that slag, it's just like teeth around here. They just, it'll just fall right out of there, okay? Till they're all missing. We're gonna take the old floppy template and uh, give us a mark across here where we need to break this. Got an eagle eye of that baby. Perp near right there. Take the old wood handle motivator. That's a pretty good one. I'm aiming for roughly there, so quite a bit to go. Now she's motivated. We are just about there. One more love tap for the Datsun. Oh, Let's see how we're doing. We're looking pretty good right in there. We're gonna have a little gap up there we need to address. We need to break her again right above that old thumb. I think we're close enough to start packing. Your truck, your car, you're fed up. So however long you wanna spend, tweaking and making her work that's up to you personally i ain't gonna spend the day doing it so as you can see that ain't perfect uh that little thing right there ain't all perfect and consistent depends how much you trust your weld and to clean up your fit up damn wind man it ticks me off the side door just creates a draft so you gotta shut it to put yourself in a better mood because you're gonna be in a bad mood when that wind takes your gas coverage. So that looks pretty good even though them gaps didn't match up perfect. With that baby capped off, I think we're gonna start looking at doing some airbag plate mocking up mounts. I'm fairly certain we gotta take this area out. It's kind of hump there, but we got the old shock mounts and uh, sway bar end mount. We got our old hard stop. We also got the hard stop here from the uh, whoop whoop, the steering. So right here we got our old fun bags and our fun bags, well, about six inches wide or so. So I think that's going to put us with our airbag kind of falling in this area. So roughly right in here, uh, we're going to need a hole. Because a bolt's going to have to go up in there. And we're probably going to have to trim this down as well. I don't know if we should de-hump that or not. Oh, yeah. Get your hiney off there. There we go. As you see, that bushing never stood a chance. You can see where the six little spot welds were on that thing. I know you're thinking, the heck are you doing, Puddin? Well, we're gonna kinda do a capital I shape here. And we're gonna make it where that hump area can collapse and we can re-weld it. Is it necessary? No clue. Do I give a damn? Not at all. Do I like cutting stuff up? You damn right, baby. Guys, if you can't tell my style is, if I don't know, yes, I could go to Google, that's right there, and probably look up Nissan Hardbody airbagging specialist and find something. But how about we just cut it and dehump her anyhow, and we just try stuff till it works. I never tell you it's the best way to do it. It's just how I like to do it. I just like to jump in, do what I want. The beautiful part about metal, it ain't like wood. Cut wood short, 
Try to weld wood back together, see if it works out for you. Boy, that metal, you can just mess her up, cut her off, weld on a new piece and start again. It's beautiful. Fuse Max, she's laying pretty flat. We don't care about her being as pretty as possible down in there. She's gonna get covered up. So that's better than leaving all that baloney down in there anyhow. Because our airbag's gonna roughly fall centered in this area, we need that bolt access. I think I'm just gonna cut us out kind of a rectangle roughly there. Uh-huh. So we need a bag plate to go on here and I guess who ain't very good about thinking ahead and ordering stuff. I thought I cut some on my plasma table at one point. I don't know how to use the thing. That's why we're not using it, okay? Uh, it'll take me a day to learn how to cut two plates and then I don't use it enough to remember how to do it So then I waste that time. I can just cut them by hand. I need some training Boy, and I've got all kinds of tabs and little brackets and whatnot But I guess I just don't have any of them round ones anymore Let's say you got plate and you ain't got the extra cash to buy you some if You've got a tape measure and a bunch of round stuff in your shop. You're in good shape So a little mount surface here is about four inches and an eighth wide or so that's about four and three eighths hell check a cup if you need to looky there sonic lid damn near perfect some other cutoff wheels see what they are oh just money too so let's say we set this here what's that like she's almost meant to be and we can locate the center real easy we may just weld that there hell you can see how that sits real nice and flush since we dehumped her. If we didn't do that, she'd be sitting like that right now. Majority of this surface is going to sit on our control arm. We don't have a whole lot of overhang, so I think I'm just going to cut these out of this as well. This is 11 gauge, by the way. Oh, pudding, that's too small. That just ain't thick enough. It's going to bend and it's going to flex, dagnabbit. No, it ain't. That's just going to hold that baby in place and all the pressure is going to be on this. And then this is going to break because I cut and welded it in about 17 different areas. But we ain't talking about that right now. Don't put two of them next to each other. You put two of them next to each other, it'll look like my favorite thing in the world. The number eight. We're gonna find center with the eagle eye. Is she perfect? Absolutely not. Well, she looked just fine when I'm going 80 and it's underneath the truck and you look at it. You're dang right she will. But will it look better than the old school mounts that used to be on the old arms? <laughs> not, no, no chance. You know, just torch out that and Slap your little tab on there and hit her with some 6010 and whip that weld and call her a day. So that'll obviously sit there like that. We can weld her there, around there, all the way around. Next, I like to stick my brand new airbags in the vise. Yeah! We'll test how strong they are anyhow. We'll slap a plug in this baby. That ought to keep her collapsed-ish. Kinda, maybe, not quite. A little crooked. We interrupt this program for, oh, baby! Look at those things. What'd you do, go buy some brand new mirrors and make them look like damn Dotson caps? Look at those. Oh, get that U-Haul box on the back, them white stillies. Come on! <laughs> so I can tell this whole airbag's gonna be a pretty tight fit. And I mean freaking tight. So we need to get her collapsed good because we ain't got room for error. We're going to try her in the press so she don't collapse crooked. And she's crooked. <laughs> <laughs> it pops on my feet. She's all there. Oh, 
Oh yeah. <laughs> this is how you want a collapsed airbag to look. I think we're trying to fit 10 pounds of shit in a five pound bag. No, it's a tight fit because we, we shorten them lower control arms so we don't have the usual working room that you would on a Nissan hard body. Basically, we're gonna have to take this to the bench and I think we need to try to get it as close as we can to the ball joint without rubbing. We're not sitting too shabby right there, but we need to take more of our arm out. We've got her tacked on anyhow. You can see how I opened her up just a little more where we can get to that bolt easier. I think we're doing good, y'all. I've been tasked with grilling. Pot County legend gonna burn her down, baby. Grilling ain't near as fun since I've been sober, but you know what, by golly, here's to six months being sober. We've kind of got the ball rolling here. We'll be back on her in the morning. <sighs> new day, new beginnings. So let's keep giving this front end a new beginning. Let's figure out that upper plate. Figure out that upper plate. So I'm gonna collapse this bag since I can't get her to collapse with the pry bar. I'm gonna measure from our uh, surface back here out to our little bolt hole there. I'm just gonna slide that roller there. And just slap us a mark on that roller. This thing's a tighter fit than I thought she was gonna be. That's all right, we ain't scared if she's snug. And we need to get a bolt. We're gonna fancy the front side here. So probably about right there and right there. Use that trusty eagle eye. Five and five eighths. Five and five eighths. That old eagle eye is good, baby. So then we'll put our ruler on here. We're gonna mark right there. We can use our triangle gusset here as a square real quick since it's sitting here. We need to lop it off. There you get a little piece of scrap to hold on to. We already got three nice clean sides. Boy, you can whip some gussets quick out of that, baby. Welcome to the fab shop. You slice stuff or your plasma stuff, you grind it, you tack it, you cut, you cut, you grind, you tack, you weld. It's a lot of the same stuff, guys. See how we did. The big old chunk of metal's hard to work around. Tighten that down loosely. Yeah, this is a... This is the Pot County Pride Bar technique. She's patented, all right? This baby inflates. We may hit here. I just... Just looking at that. Yeah, we're, we're not even close to hitting a lot of lift, so uh, let me do a little look in here. Now that I have this pride good where I can kind of look, we've actually got plenty of room to scoop back. To make better clearance over here, we can actually take this airbag on our lower arm that away, since our upper arm's kind of that away. So I think we can take her back a quarter inch and over that way maybe three quarters of an inch. Draw me a couple reference marks here. So we can go back a quarter of an inch. And we can go that way three quarter of an inch. Well, I apologize there, old tornado sirens. Was I interrupting your video? I'm gonna cut us up more of this thing. We're just gonna keep cutting it out till there ain't nothing left, you know. Position her up here for round two. We're gonna offset this way. And then we're gonna go back to my mark. About right there. Helps if she's grounded. We're sitting good clearance wise. I think with a little grinding, we can clear the front control arm here, but now we're gonna hit on the back. I think we can trim off that lip right there and 
Maybe we can work it. We may have to work that plate too. Tight, tight, tight fit, guys. So I need to tack that plate where I want it. Just pry down on it, tack it. Then start trimming that control arm and whatnot. We'll see what happens here. Tack that in. Just some scrap there to help brace that. We need to trace our airbag right there on our bracket. We're gonna have to pull this bracket back off and trim her down. I think a combination of that will get it clearing where we can get decent lift. Then we'll have to figure out a hard stop where our control arm never gets into our airbag. Y'all having fun yet or what? All this damn work for old Dax and Lowrider of all things. <laughs> so she ain't looking too shabby there. We took a lot of material off. So after a little trim job, got her right back there, tacked back in. So we definitely got our clearance now. We definitely got it ready to hit the airbag now. <laughs> so that's about as far as she's gonna be able to travel before we start hitting airbag. You got your fire from the hip six shooter ready? Cause we're about to fire from the hip, baby. Let's do some ballpark guesstimating with the eagle eye and a tape measure. So if we measure from there to where that spindle sits on that ball joint, we got about 22 and a half. We measure that on this spindle. It's about five and an eighth from the top of this to the center of the hub. So we're gonna drop from 22 and a half, five inches down. That's gonna give us 17 and a half. Radius of the wheel's gonna ballpark in about 12 and a half. So if we drop that 12 and a half from our 17 and a half, we're gonna end up with an even five inches, give or take just a little bit. It means if that spindle is on there right now, that hub was located, that wheel was on there, the bottom of the tire would roughly be about five inches off the ground. Bottom of that right there is 15 inches. We got the imaginary tire on, there's five inches floating there. We drop it down, that means this is gonna drop even more. About five inches worth. Which would mean that suspension traveled as far as it could go to lift up would have our body right at 10 inches off the ground. Now is 10 inches enough lift to kind of get it back up close to factory? It'll be fairly close. Uh, let's find out. According to this one, 10 inches is pretty close. I don't know what, what orange Dotson y'all's talking about. I ain't never seen one here. The old Datsun King strikes again, baby. There it is, y'all see it back there. So I think 10 inches would be enough. And I know it, it looks crazy, but guys, I think this is gonna work. So with that tacked in, we need to look at actually gusseting all this crap in a way where stuff is still clearing and strong. Let's figure out a gusset or two. We could also radius these to make them look a little better. Kind of liking that one to brace that. We're going to change up the other side and put a couple Doritos on there. We're going to use old slice and dice to keep nice clean edges on these gussets for no cleanup. Or a very small amount of cleanup anyhow. Couple smoochies with that baby and that'll take care of it. Be a whole lot easier to burn this in with that out of there. Or can weld her top and bottom. There's only one way I want to burn that in, and that's if we cycle suspension and make sure everything's going to be good. We're going to cycle the suspension. I'm okay with that little gusset out there holding us. I'm going to tack this across here to stiffen her up. She don't need much, just enough to help that. help your suspension not flex. Hell, now she's rolling. See how we're doing. 
It's not laying full frame. Right there by the old pile of dirt. She's only got about an inch left to drop before the cab mount hits, which means this is still gonna be a couple inches off the ground. An old Jacob Pudding Warner there had her in the mini trucking. Well, that's how she laid out then too, apparently. So we can see that baby an inch. Whoop, drop her down a little more. But the only way that thing's ever gonna lay like super flat is with a body drop. And guys, I just ain't ready to commit to that quite yet. You know, I'm just winging it and dinging it. Right now I wanna stay focused on the front suspension. So let's see if it'll cycle and get lift like we want. We're gonna put our quarter inch airline into our airbag. This side we're gonna hook up to our little Schrader valve here. Now it'd be much wiser to get the other side caught up to this point and test them at the same time instead of shoving her that away. But around here, I'm the king of I don't give a damn. And we're just gonna try this one side. Stacked up that other side, guys. I think that's plenty of lift. Still got well over a quarter inch clearance underneath there. So we can build a hard stop for this if we want. And boom, she's good. That's what we wanted to see. That means we can make her purdy now, burn it in. Uh, whether we body drop it, whether we zit it, none of that's gonna affect that. So we are sitting pretty, finally. All right, we can blow her apart, make her look pretty, gussing her up. I'm burn that baby in. Now I'm gonna get her on the top side. Oh baby, she's welded in. They're at a little bit of an angle there, no big deal. They're right there where our nut's gonna be. I didn't weld that little spot. Just that way we got plenty of room for her. Oh, she's toasty. Now I just welded that baby all up. Gonna weld that baby and smooth her out. See how she clink clanks on there? We're gonna give her a love tap down. So she don't really wiggle it anymore, we'll take it. About had her welded up and ran out of wire. Come on. Back in business, baby. Ah! When you run out of wire mid weld, be sure to start again and leave your gas off, that way you really mess her up. Come on. Left them welds, but decided to grind those ones out and kind of smooth that up. That old shaft's just so close to her, I figured we'd give her as much clearance as possible. Kind of help shape that too and help it kind of flow. Pretty happy with how she looked. I think we're gonna add one piece right up front. She needs a little curve in her. That fits pretty darn good. Heads or tails? We're laying damn quarters over here. For this to move, it's gotta push that. For that to move, it's gotta push quarter inch thick plate. A slap of the paint on there and you look down in here and well, she'll look just fine. Oh, old Datsun's kind of whooped me, ain't she? Uh, guys, I ain't bagged a mini truck since this mini truck. That's right. First mini truck I ever bagged. Only mini truck I ever bagged. I would have saved myself a lot of headache just trimming that top plate down from the start. I probably knew that, but oh well. Uh, only thing we ain't got welded up is our bottom plate here, so let me burn her in. There's only one thing left to do here, guys. A whole nother damn side.
between uh, going and looking at old cars, tummy aches and other stuff. I barely got caught up today. Got this side all burned in. She's looking pretty good. That side flows and looks all sleek. This side, because I didn't feel that and grind it, you can actually tell how, uh, how much that old quarter inch plate just braces her. She pushes on those, those push on this. That can't go anywhere because of that. And this plate can't flex because of these. Boom, boom, bam, bam. I think we're good. It's crazy how much different they look just from leaving that weld versus that. I think I'm gonna leave them like that just for all my viewers out there with OCD. There you go, that one's for you guys. <laughs> Don't say I never did anything for you. So besides that, I ain't done nothing else right today. Y'all can call me Mr. Wrong Bushin from now on if you want. I drove that old Bushin out of there. And boy howdy did she play a uh, hell coming out of there, okay? Try to put us a Nissan a hard body one in there. But she's too big and she's the wrong Bushin. We need Bushins to triangulate the lower control arms with. I don't think they sent the wrong ones. I probably ordered the wrong ones. To say my attention span was even Less than half involved is more than fair when I was paying attention and ordered these. Look at these cute little things. What in the little golf cart are we supposed to be building with this, huh? Mountain off-road enterprises. The, the heck are you trusting off-road with this? I wouldn't trust that SOB on-road, much less off-road. Only off-road and you better be doing with that's on a damn mountain bike or something. So maybe one day we'll build a go-kart and we can use these. Three-eighths bolt. <laughs> off-road <laughs> you'll take her off-road once then you'd be taking her on a trailer or on the back of a tow truck i was real smart and ordered like six of them too we may just may have what we need to mock up some anyhow Whoa. not quite she's an inch and three quarter to use my mock-ups we need a two inch well shit the bed Y'all ain't gonna believe this. This is why you need to clean the cabinet out every once in a while. Don't y'all worry about that. Safety lock. There we go. Well, well, well. What do we have here? Our little mock-up end. Perfect! That means we're in luck for tomorrow. Which means we're done for tonight. Huh. Whoa, baby. I just knew it'd be damn snowing out here. Let's ask the old weather stick. Well, she ain't hanging, so we got fair weather today anyhow, according to her. That damn thing works, by the way. <laughs> Probably a good thing it ain't snowing. Man, me, snow, and Dawson's don't mix, do we? <laughs> oh, shit. Pimp down. Pimp down all the way. Turn in my coat. I'm done. Come on. I thought we had a chance of snow because this front end just plum snowballed. Pudding, did you decide to Z it? Pudding, are we going to body drop it? Pudding, are we going to see how low can she go? The answer to that is no. No. I just started gusseting some of that stuff because I, the internet, I know y'all's going to call me out and be like, oh, that ain't strong enough. I'm on the internet land. I can see it from here. Uh, I can tell it's going to bend. So I was like, let me figure out a gusset, maybe two. And I did. <laughs> Boy, I did. So here's the new gusseted front end. She's gusseted on the back side too. So I added these that wrap from the bottom of the frame up to there. Of course, then I added a little corner piece there. Basically did the same thing over here. And y'all know good and well, some speed holes almost look as good as some new balances. Couple of simple gussets turned into four hours of work later. I had her figured out. Got a whole nother side to do. We're gonna try to speed through this because it's all the same stuff. Cutting plate, welding it in. These babies are mocked up. Those are from the other side. They fit over here too. Means we're doing stuff symmetrical. Means like Mr. Monopoly, we're on the money, baby. It means that that side matches this side and this side matches that side, which means we should go whoop straight line down the road and we finally drive her. Like a roofer laying down some shingles, guys, I nailed it and uh, cut these out just perfectly the first time. Uh, all that scrap cardboard, uh, that, that wasn't from me. Uh, Hot Rod come outside and did arts and crafts. That's what that's from. 
I wish I could tell you guys there's a magic formula to how I plot my speed holes there, but eagle eye, that's the magic formula. Woo, baby! This thing almost looks like one of Mortsky's scrapers too, don't it? All right, we're chipping, and we're grinding. Y'all know we're gonna cut and grind. So right here's where things get a little different on this one. I'm gonna give her a mark right here. That's her pivot point. We're gonna slap this baby in the old press brake. She's the custom glass handle bottle jack motivator. Oh, when you release that, she sticks. Just let her know who's boss. There we go. Better give me my piece back. So looky there. My whole damn shop's in shambles, y'all. It's, it's a damn mess. There it is. We're going to copy that angle. Dead money, a buck fifteen. We're not quite there, but we were pretty close, which is why we wanted to check her before we went too far. There we go. She is a buck fifteen on the dot. When you're good, you're good, guys. Everybody loves speed holes. If you don't, get some taste and style. If you need advice about taste and style, just give me a call. We'll talk about it. <laughs> Add the bigger hole right there where the metal's the thinnest, you know, to really unstrengthen her as you're trying to strengthen it. Just makes her beautiful, don't it? Oh, baby! Did y'all see that? Please tell me that y'all seen that. Please! Y'all thought I was the only one who liked yeehaws around here, huh? Please tell me y'all just seen that box cut down with some damn hay on the back. That's a hay hauler, all right? That's a damn yeehaw hay hauler if I ever seen one. My brother! I actually think a woman was driving it. Not a girl, not a lady. That's a damn woman. I wonder if that rig's for sale. It should be. Wow, flat bed, damn, take everything around here. That thing just made my little yeehaw look like a little yee punk. Could y'all imagine how many t-shirts we could get on the back of that thing? I don't even remember what the hell we were talking about over here. I just got so excited. <laughs> <laughs> I got way too excited for that thing. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. That brought a good laugh off camera. I got tears in my eyes, y'all. <laughs> now we're gonna get to the, the finer fit up tune here. All right, wait, guy. She just drove past. I went running out the shop so damn fast I knocked the battery clean out the camera. Baby, come back. Use that old tape measure and marker. Check the other side and gave us a mark here where we need to come out to. Basically a little tune up on that back side and I beveled that edge. And boom, baby, she's ready to go. Got her welded across the top. Looking good down here. We'll grind this weld away. She'll go bye-bye. We need her flush and flat for that airbag. Man, that looks good. So now we need to add a little curve in this piece and we need to fit it just a little bit. A little whoop whoop at a time. She's getting there. Pretty happy with that, guys. Well, we just got some crud in right there at the bottom. Probably a dirty piece of frame or something. So, guess what we get to do? We're gonna grind that baby back out. Right up front. You know, we can't have her looking bad. Mm -hmm. 
Grind her out and try again. She looks a little better there anyhow. We started with nickels, went to quarters. We're about to lay some damn half dollars now. <laughs> Oh yeah, she's gonna be stiffer than that old fair weather stick. And that's pretty stiff today. We could finish capping that and grind that out and that would all look smooth, but I'm just gonna leave the weld, guys. We're doing the same thing on the back side, guys. We got a Mordsky scraper template. This one's a little different. I'm gonna knock them out. I think she's ready for the Baja, guys. The rest of this side went good, no surprises. The only surprise was that there wasn't no surprises. Everything fit up good on the back side, got her all welded up. Kind of spit shine this baby up for you over here. Got her all wire brushed and whatnot. Versus this side that's still dirty. I know this is all quarter inch plate and everything, but now that I'm looking at that, I'm wondering if we shouldn't run something down the back of here. I got some half inch thick plate here. I was thinking we could cut a <laughs> I'm so full of it. If that ain't braced enough for y'all, then I quit, damn it. We ain't putting half inch nothing on nothing. If you don't like how I braced it, you're a half inch away from getting new balance up your you know what. Oh man, all that work and you guys are not gonna believe this. The freaking control arm hits. <laughs> I said it, it hits on purpose boom hard stop for the control arm so we never get into our airbag gotcha didn't i probably not y'all smarter than me y'all already knew what i was doing just right before she gets to the airbag we'll have a hard stop just me personally guys when we get the full monster lift kit on this thing like the other day when we tested lift when we get to that point i'd rather have a metal to metal stop instead of a Whatever that is. <laughs> Instead of a control arm hitting an airbag. Hey, check this baby out with that control arm on there. Baby looks pretty good on there, I'd say. I truly didn't plan on getting that buck nasty with the gussets, or we would have planned this from the start, and we would have uh, been doing some holes on this piece too, but I guess we could cut it all off and start again. Not happening. Let me tell you guys about these bushings. As soon as I seen this was too big, I hopped on the O'Reilly's website and they had the outside diameter of this thing listed at 40 millimeters. Immediately, I looked up the 620, what that thing is, and it shows outside diameter is 36 millimeters. That four millimeters will get you. Width-wise, the 621 was about two and nine sixteenths. Now, I understand that's not metric. We're using a standard tape measure here. And this hard body one, roughly, three and three sixteenths. We need this width, but we need it in a smaller diameter. So all you JDMers, what did they make between the 620 and the hard body? If you said 720, you just won. The, the Datsun Nissan 720. So I pulled her up on the O'Reilly's, check the diameter, 36 millimeter. Oh, 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 that's a little closer to our Datsun, like exactly the same. But we don't know the width of it because that ain't listed. Well, don't worry. Why don't we get on the old fat tire? Dang old girl needs some uh, some tire pressure. We got her air down for mud bogging. So if we just come uh, down back here. Did you say you need a 720? <laughs> I about ate shit. We have what's left of the old Mortsky rig from the Duel of the Datsun video he posted that's on his channel that's me and him for an hour and a half just beating the you know what out of datsuns what else could you ask for these things look pretty dang close to the three and three sixteenths which is what we measured for the old hard body we need some 720 bushings y'all i did all these extreme calculations yesterday okay and got some ordered supposed to be here at noon 30. called them asked them if they were in Someone noticed that I got some Nissan hard body ones the other day. Assumed those were what I wanted and decided not to order me my 720 ones. 
That was mighty nice of you. Thank you. So I said, can you order them for me again? This time, do not send them back. I would like to have them. I guess I just order stuff because I'm bored. They ordered them. But guess what? I ain't going to be here till Monday now. The old hog goes downhill better than she goes uphill. Boy, other than that Pot County tie rod, all that's looking pretty good. You see, we mocked her up with some all thread there. We're going to use this baby to uh, guide us, okay, to triangulate this lower, which is where this stuff finally comes in. So we need to cut us a piece of this uh, two inches long. We're going to use real fancy stuff here, guys. We're going to go around this whole thing and mark her at two inches. We're going to wrap her all the way around, just touching them marks. Bingo. Apparently, I've done this before on here. That very fancy slice and dice. Did y'all see that? Damn good thing my Hank Jr.'s blocked that. That would have been a bad day. She's Pot County perfect. Got this aluminum bushing mock-up kit, so she pops in there. Then you can put whatever washer you want, depending on if you want a half inch, nine sixteenths, or a five eighths bolt. How fancy. Of course, we're going five eighths to match our all thread underneath there. So there she is bolted in place. Using that old cat again, trying to get us a shape here. Maybe. We gotta swoop out pretty wide, because I think we're gonna try to put our shock off here. I think we can make something like that work. Bill brought me some tubing, and we're gonna leave about an inch or so. Then we're gonna kind of walk this out on here, leave about an inch or so. And then we're gonna cut this to a more workable length. We're gonna break out the old Pot County uh, tube bender here. Cap that in. Now usually you'd fill this thing with sand. I don't have sand. My wife tried to get me some at the Lowe's. Couldn't find any. If sand won't get it, the kitty litter will, baby. <laughs> We're gonna pack this with powerful color control, 99% dust free. She's non-clumping edition. It may go in there, but it may never come out. <laughs> this requires a little more finesse. Gotta be gentle with her. Let her know you love her. Let her know she's in good hands. She don't work. I would've always thought she shoulda. Spill kitty litter everywhere, that's perfect. I ain't used the old torch in a good minute. The kitty litter ain't gonna cut it, guys. See how she's starting to kink there? You got actual sand where you can pour it in there and pack it, pour it in there, pack it. You can get it in there so tight it will not let it do that, guys. It'll it'll make a nice bend. Made that work. It slip onto our all thread and well, I used some tape to fine tune her. Traced our circle, our two lines there, and then just, you know, played some connect the dots till I got a little shape I'm happy with. Don't worry about all that. Of course the camera wasn't rolling. She got demolished. Speaking of demolished, look at this shop. Holy cow. Mess around with me and die. I'll put the old Big Bertha on you. <laughs> Hit you with the old Harris Pepper Special. Bingo, baby. That's perfect. I'm headed in, guys. Uh, spend some time with the girls. It's way too late, Friday night. Still got a lot of editing. The snowballs are rolling, we'll just say that. Y'all ready to go around two? I ain't scared. Got some sand? 
She looks a little wet, maybe. I went in last night, cold front come through. I'm talking about like a 15 minute period. It, it drops to like from 60 to 20. Thank goodness I cleaned this shop before it got that cold. Another reason I need to clean this cabinet, I got to thinking about it and I was like, man, I think I got some other tubing. This stuff here, she's even thicker than that other stuff. She's even pre-blasted and almost cut to length. Cap our tubing. We're gonna get our sand in, and this time we're gonna be a little more delicate doing it. We're gonna make sure to pack her good as we go. Just like any job out there, guys, you gotta have the right tools for the job. A welder probably needs a welder. If you're gonna cut grass for a living, you probably need a damn lawnmower. Or be persistent with a weed eater. If you're a lifeguard, you probably need one of them little floaties to take with you. What I'm getting at is the first one didn't go well because we didn't use the right tool for the job, guys. Oh, but don't worry. I brought her today. Oh, <laughs> we're gonna get her done now. Don't tell Hot Rod I borrowed her shovel. I've had like two buddies say, hey man, why don't you just come use my tubing bender real quick? Cause I gotta show the people. <laughs> this sand is pretty wet, so we're probably gonna make a little uh, steam bomb here. I purposely left us a little gap down there so some water could escape. I ain't trying to make no Pot County pipe bomb. Gotta be pretty close right there. We'll take it, guys. I mean, there's a little in there, guys. You can tell she wasn't just on a freaking die or something, but that's pretty good. So here's our first one. She swoops pretty nice and clean. That one right there, well, she, she kinked, guys. I started trying that one with no cap on it, and it started kinking, too. Hey, there's some dry sand. So there's a real good one, guys. Try to salvage that one, she's kinking too. Here's a good thing, guys. The good thing is I'm honest with you guys because I could have just showed like the outside edge or whatever and uh, been like, oh yeah, she turned out perfect too and recorded the right way where y'all would have never known it kinked some, but welcome to some at-home fabrication. If I had a stick of this stuff, we'd been a thousand of them until we got another one I was happy with. The good thing is that even though this one's kind of kinked, uh, she pretty well matches up to our good one almost perfect. We ain't got a bushing for this side anyway, so we can't even mock it up, which gives us time to get more material. And now we got a reference for uh, the passenger side, or we may use it, guys. I don't know. That may be a good reason to put some plate in between there and show y'all how to salvage that. All right, you convinced me. We'll run it. I ain't scared. Y'all want to talk crap on my kinked arm? She'll turn out all right because everyone can see inside a control arm underneath the truck, you know. We're gonna kinda hold her in place where it looks good. Reference marker and start cutting her down till she fits. Knock some of that paint off. That baby fits all right. Trim this side about an eighth inch too short, but we can make her work. That old welder will make up that gap. Don't y'all worry about that. Just playing. Uh, we just had to slide her back a little further than I wanted, but have I steered you guys wrong yet? I didn't think so. I knew she wasn't compressed all the way. Thought I left enough room for her, but she is hitting the frame. I have to re-tack her. Then we got her tacked up on the A-arm there. Now there is a little gap at the front, but more importantly, there's a gap between that and our frame now. 
So he's got a good extra quarter inch even. Guys, I think we're at a good stopping point. With no bushing to put back in there to center it up, we can't do diddly on that side. And even on the driver's side, there's plenty to do, guys, where that tab comes down for our control arm now. Uh, we may have to dimple dice a gusset and slap her in there. And of course, there's shocks we still ain't got to. We still ain't figured out our tie rods. And I just built some big old quarter inch thick gussets that I promised. I didn't even consider shocks or tie rods or them getting in the way, so that's good. I know you think it's fine until you air out and them tie rods suck up all the way and then there's a gusset there. So who knows what we're gonna get into on the next go around. Definitely should have thought about that. <laughs> Steering shocks, finishing out A-arms, dimple dying, all kinds of stuff left. And we need to get the drivetrain sat in this thing after the front end's kind of tidied up so we can uh, <laughs> get to the fun stuff. This thing still needs a whole new rear suspension. Boy, what in the snow? My arch nemesis. Oh, shit. If you guys want to see more on this thing, I need you to comment down below. Say, keep going. Say, stop going. I don't know, guys. The more comments, it helps the video. Uh, the better the videos do, the more I can do this kind of stuff. So y'all just let me know down below. And, uh, of course, I appreciate you guys watching. Uh, Patreons, Instagram, uh, merchandise. Shirts are restocking soon. Uh, maybe this next week or so. Uh, so don't forget, sitting on your ass won't finish your project. Now my project is clean up this little bitty mess and get inside before that snow gets me again. So with the tie rod not on there, uh, the front lays a hell of a lot harder. Uh, that thing lays so hard a cat can't scratch it. Uh, so yeah, if I was a betting man, I was, I'd say we're about to have some tie rod interference. These great stickers all available at thepuddingsfabshop.com.